What's going on, Paul fans? Welcome back to another video on my channel, and today we're going to be talking about Port Adelaide's most underrated players from recent history. Uh, there's quite a few different names that I'm going to go through that may surprise you, but may also, um, you may recognise as well, that may not have got as much recognition um, across um, interstate um, and throughout the AFL in general. So let's, without further ado, go straight into this list of Port Adelaide's most underrated players. Now it's a very debatable topic. You can, you know, say as many names as possible, and you can judge them. And um, so this will open up for the the conversation for you guys to comment below who are the, you know, some of the most underrated players for Port Adelaide in recent times, um, especially in the AFL. And if you got um, SNFL players from the Magpies as well, put a, an argument for each player. Um, it just depends how much recognition they get. But I've got. Five here that you may recognise really well as a Port fan from history. Um, and I'm going to start with Josh Franco, a bloke who played 156 games for Port Adelaide in the early 2000s. Um, was a ripping player, he was a vice captain as well. And he really, um, he really had a career where it was just injury riddled. And he couldn't really take um, as much of a step into his career as he would have liked. But every time he did take the field, he was certainly one of the more predominant players. And he really led from the front uh, with his skill and just his presence around the ball. And his smartness as well, which was fantastic. And I don't think he got as much credit as possible um, throughout his career. And, you know, 156 games, he could have played at least 200, 250 and would have been remarked as one of the more, you know, special players to play for our club. Another one that was very underrated and I was personally one of my favourites um, was Brett Ebert, uh, who played for 10 years at the footy club um, through 2004 to 2013. Unfortunately, his last season was um, completely injury riddled and couldn't play a game with his cousin. Um, but 166 games for the power, 240 goals uh, with his best season in 2007. I think was selected in the All-Australian squad, wasn't in the 22. Um, he was a leading goal kicker there that year as well. 2004 Rising Star nominee. Um, and another one that was injury riddled in his career. But he was certainly um, a player that had so much promise. And every time he got an injury or had a bit of a form slump, um, you know, it sort of hindered his progress as a player. But I think for a little guy, little meatball that he was. Um, he had a great overhead mark, a booming left foot kick, and um, you know one mega head, that's for sure. But he was certainly um, a personal favourite of mine. Was very underrated for a period of time, and um, you know that success, well, little success that we had in two thousand and seven, um, you know where we were pretty good up until the grand final. Uh, 2005 as well, he started to make a name for himself. And, you know, throughout the careers where Treadray was sort of injured and we didn't really have much of a forward target, little guys really stood up and Brett, Brett Ebert was certainly one of them. And as you may know, he's obviously the cousin of Brad. So um, to have a name like an Ebert, uh, he certainly didn't quite live up to the expectations. But in saying that, he certainly should be proud of the way he did for the club. He was sensational. Ebert outnumbered, Hearn with courage, Motlock cleverly, Ebert's on his wrong side, it doesn't stop him, oh, well. getting his goal. You know, who's underrated? Who are a lot of people that, who are players that a lot of people are not going to know? Um, who do they think of when they hear underrated? Uh, and for me, this one was very, very underrated, coming to the club at, um, in the 1998 season, was a part of our 2004 Premiership defence lineup, Matthew Bishop. You know, he was a runner. He could carry the ball. He was a very, very solid one on one defender and it was very underrated in um, how he went about it. He had a great right foot kick. Um, he didn't kick a lot of goals, but he seemed to pop up every now and then, kicking goals from outside 50. Um, and he was certainly you know, one of those players that you could rely on in defence where uh, a lot of things wouldn't be going your way. But, you know, to play at a premiership with the club, he you know, he, he dominated when he was in defence. And um, I think, you know, that 132 games that he had in the eight-year span, I think he had with the club, uh, he definitely showed that, you know, defending isn't all about, um, you know, just being one-on-one. -on -one. It's about 
attacking and really taking the game on as much as defending. So he was very underrated for a characteristic like him. They just take it up and cruised off. Now he's got a problem. Comes to Bishop. Bishop, Bishop does well. Steps around a would-be tackler. Kicks yes. over free ball. And it's a massive kick. Yes. It's a goal. Michael Wilson was very underrated as a Port Adelaide player. Um, unfortunately, you know, at the end of 2007, did his Achilles before the grand final, which, you know, I think hindered up, hindered our chances a little bit. But 192 games for the club. He was the rising star winner in 1997. A magnificent user of the footy. He had speed. He had class. He, need, he has everything that we need in today's side. Michael Wilson was sensational coming off the halfback flank. Um, he was, you know, predominantly a um, full uh, in the back pocket, but he ran. He he could utilise the ball. He could kick goals, which was a very key thing. And I've noticed it from our earlier years in the two thousands that a lot of our defenders did kick goals, which was uh, something I think we lack today. And I think that just might be the modernisation of the game and it's more midfield and forward based. Uh, but I really feel, as a collective in the early years, someone like Michael Wilson could break the game open like that and really hurt the opposition. And he was someone that did that in spades, and I really feel he was one of the more under, underrated players to ever play for Port Adelaide. Across the ground, Wakeland's run off Barry Hall. Left foot's it down the line, even. Big shot on Barry Hall. He will remember that against Michael Wilson. I tell you what, Barry Hall ran all the way to the wing to tell Michael Wilson he's after him. <laughs> it's a fair but Barry got up and thought, <laughs> I want him. <laughs> Roger James, in, in his period of time, the way he used the footy was second to none. He had class, he had skill, and he had smartness and precision. That was, that was something that we, yeah, we lack today. But back then, in the period of 02, 03, 04, where our club was pretty much the most dominant team in the competition, along with Brisbane, obviously without winning the premierships. You know, he won games off his own boot. He beat Brisbane twice, kicking the winning goal uh, in 2001 and 2002, um, or 2003 as well. One of the years, uh, 04, his prelim final performance where he basically held our team together in that first half and somehow we got across the line. He was underrated as anything. He defines underrated. Simple as that. You know, 147 games for the club. He was uh, part of the 04 Premiership um, team, as we know. And I really feel he was someone that gelled the team together. And really, <laughs> he was really, really good. Um, and one of my personal favourites from the early years. Play by Michael at ground level. Here's a chance for Stevens. Stevens goes high and long towards the goal square. Two and two. Bang! Oh, he almost brought it down. Here's James. He's had a marvellous game. He puts him in front. Brilliant goal. Well, Port fans, let me know in the comments below who do you think um, are some of the more underrated Port Adelaide players from um, our AFL sides across the years. It's a very debatable topic, and I think some of our players today are certainly in that category. We're not far away from 1,000 subscribers. Last time I checked, it was 11. Um, if you have not already, please hit that subscribe button. 11 to go. So much is planned um, for when we finally get it. It amazes me every day that you guys continue to support the channel, even in the off season. You know, there's not a lot of footy, not a lot of, not a lot of news going around, um, and you're still here. So thank you very much for, for the support. And um, make sure you keep tuning into all the videos. Thanks so much for watching, Port fans. My name is Anthony, and as always, come here.